Hey guys, this is Dharmendra Keshri. In this Fabric session, I'm going to talk about managed private endpoints for Microsoft Fabric, which recently got announced in public preview. So what is managed private endpoints network security feature in Microsoft Fabric? Suppose you as a data engineer are working with Microsoft Fabric you want to bring the data securely from Azure platform data sources like Azure SQL DB, storage account, Azure Synapse Analytics, or from any other supported data sources to Microsoft Fabric. So the managed private endpoints network security feature will allow to bring the data securely to data engineering experience of Microsoft Fabric. As of today, managed private endpoints only enable Fabric Data Engineering items to securely access those supported data sources which are behind a firewall without exposing them to public network. To create managed private endpoints, we need administrator permission at workspace level. Now, let's look at some of the limitations and considerations of private endpoints which might affect your use cases and workflows. So the first one, managed private endpoints are only supported for fabric trial capacity and fabric capacity which are greater than equals to F64. So once you enable fabric managed endpoint feature, to your workspace label, lake house table maintenance operations are not supported. Now the third item, workspace migration across capacities in different regions isn't supported. Now the fourth, managed private endpoints require the fabric capacity and the data sources to be the same reason. They don't work across different regions at the same time. There are other limitations. To understand more on those limitations, what I would recommend to go through the public documentation, it will give you the brief idea. Now, let's dive into the demo to see it in the practical. Now, I have already logged into app.fabric.microsoft.com. Let's click on the Synapse Data Engineering Experience click on the workspace. Let's create a new workspace. I'll give the name of the new workspace manage private endpoints and just apply. Now I'm going to create a lake house. Go to the more options, click on the lake house. I'm going to give the name LH1. Click on create. I'll go back to my workspace again and I'll click on these three dots. Click on this workspace setting. Now I'm going to create manage private endpoints. So click on the network security. Click on create. It will ask you manage private endpoint name. So in this case, I'm going to give it manage private endpoints underscore Azure SQL DB. This is where I'm going to connect. So it needs resource identifier of my Azure SQL DB. I'll go to my Azure SQL database logical server and click on properties. Under that, you will get resource ID. Just copy this resource ID, paste here. Once you paste this resource ID, the target sub resource will show it is Azure SQL database. For example, if I change my resource identifier, from Azure SQL logical server to a storage account. So this is my storage account. And if I go to the endpoint and I click this storage account resource ID, copy this. And if I paste it to my this resource identifier, now if I look at my target resource sub resource, you will see all storage account related drop down. Right. So as I want to connect to Azure SQL database, I'll go to Azure SQL uh, logical server. I will copy back this resource ID and I'll paste it 
under this resource identifier. Now I will select to Azure SQL database and I want to give a request message, some meaningful message so that I can identify later on that this create manage private endpoint is being used for what. So I'll give the message like connect to Azure logical SQL server using private endpoint. So let's click on create. Now it's provisioning. So let me refresh it. By the time it is provisioning, I'll go to my Azure SQL database and I'll go to the network. So let's look at, I don't have, I'll disable this public access of this Azure SQL database. I'll save it. And I'll go to the private access. Now you can see the, uh, the private, managed private endpoint which I created in this fabric, which basically send a request to be added here as a private access. So I'll click this option and I'll click approve. When I'm approving this, it will ask me some meaningful message so that I can use it later. So in this case, I'm going to just put it, this endpoint is connecting to my workspace, this lake house, this, and I'll say yes. Let me refresh this. So you can see this endpoint got approved. Now I'll go back to my fabric again and I'll click this refresh button. So you can see this has been activated. Now it is waiting for this approval which we gave it here to be synced here. So I'll refresh it a couple of times. Now the approval status got updated and it says approved. Now I'll go back to my workspace and I'll click to this new button and click this notebook. Let's open a new notebook. And connect to your lake house, add the lake house here. So this is my lake house name under this workspace. I'll say add. Once it got Add it. I'm going to connect to my Azure SQL DB. So look at here. This is my Azure SQL DB. If I go to my SQL server, logical server name, you can see this is my server name. So this is my Azure SQL server name. And then this is my database name. This is port number. This is user and the table which I'm going to read it. And at the end, I'm writing this table as orders table in this lake house. As of now, my lake house does not have table. So let me run this query. As we don't have public endpoint enabled for our Azure SQL logical server. So like, let's look at the, here. So we don't have public access or public endpoint enabled, right? But it can still connect to my Azure SQL database using private endpoint, right? And fetch the data and saved into my lake house table. We can see this data is available under orders table now. With this, I conclude my video. Thank you for watching it.